All right, hopefully that works, right? We'll find out, I guess. All right, so unit five, fifth unit out of eight for the semester is complex numbers. It should be a pretty quick unit, uh, six days, which means we are doing days one and two this week. Monday and Tuesday of next week will be days three and four. Wednesday will be a review day, and that will mean next Thursday is going to be our test on this All unit. Right. Okay, yeah, it's a really quick unit. Uh, some of the other units this quarter are going to be very long, which kind of sucks. But this one should be a short unit. Should be relatively easy compared to logs. Um, so today's a, should be a really easy day. But so let's get going. Complex numbers, imaginary numbers. First and foremost, where do they belong in our number system? Right? If you look at it, we have a real number system. This includes all real numbers. We have irrational and rational. We have integers, we have whole numbers, we have natural numbers. All these perfect squares are in there. Where do imaginary numbers belong? They're on their own, right? They're not in this real number system. So why do we need them? Well, if we look here, x squared equals 36. If I want to solve that, what would I do? I would square root both sides, right? And I would get x equals 6. Good. We all know how to do that. Now, what about if I said x squared equals negative 36? If I square root that and I square root that, what's x going to equal? It's not possible, right? So we don't know. It's, it's a question mark. We do not know how to do that. And that is the exact reason why imaginary numbers came about. Is that we could take the square root of a negative number like that. So our first part here, talking about imaginary numbers, they were thought to be impossible at one point. They're called imaginary, kind of make fun of them. And then the name stuck, right? So we, we use an I, symbolize a lot of times you'll see me write it. It's a lowercase I. And the big thing here, first part, I equals the square root of negative 1. Because then when we take the square root of a negative number, we can take and pull that I out by doing the square root of negative 1. Now, even more important than I equals the square root of negative 1, I squared equals negative 1. Put a bunch of stars around that, circle it, highlight it, do whatever you need to do. That is the most important thing you're going to learn today. I squared equals negative 1. I'm going to ask you that about a million times in the next week. What does I squared equal? Negative, negative 1. Okay. Right? You need to know that. I squared equals negative 1. Super important. Alright. Oh, what are we going to use it for? My God, can we move on? You saw it and sat down. Alright. So, what do we use it for? Well, we use it to simplify radicals that have a negative underneath. How we do that is, if I have the square root of negative 100, do we all agree that's the same as the square root of 100 times negative 1? Yes. That's the same thing, right? Okay. Well, that's the same as 100 times... What I just say negative 1 is the same as? Negative 1 is the same as I squared. So I'm going to change negative 1 to I squared. Why, does it, why would we do that? That doesn't make sense. But it does. If I take the square root of 100, what do I get? 10. If I take the square root of I squared, what do I get? 10. I get I, right? If I take the square root of X squared, that equals X. The square root and the square cancel. Same thing. If I take the square root of I squared, I will always get I. And that's my answer. The square root of negative 100 is going to equal 10I. All I'm going to break it down into two pieces. The square root of 100 and the square root of I squared. I get 10I. Should we try another one? Um, Let's do another one together. Square root of negative 9. I'm going to do the same thing. Square root of 9 times negative 1, we can all agree, that equals negative 9. And then square root of 9 times i squared, because negative 1 is the same as i squared. Okay. What's the square root of 9? 3. What's the square root of i squared? I. So my answer is 3i. Now, once you get really good at this, do you think you can just go from square root of negative 9 to 3i? Yeah. 
Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I have no problem with that. What's up? The next one would be 2R. Okay, so hold on. Question? So basically, you can just get the answer and then put I after it? If you take like, the square root of 4 and you just put I after it, yeah, that'll work. But some of them won't be nice, perfect squares like this. We'll see that in a little bit. Um, so it won't be that easy. So yeah, so the next one it will be 2i, because if we take square root of 4 times negative 1, same as square root of 4 times i squared, well, square root of 4 is 2, square root of i squared is i. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions on that? Okay. If you look at number three, it's got a negative up front. Negative square root of negative 25. What do you think we do with that negative? Do you think I should do anything with it before I do square root of negative 25? No, I'm going to leave it alone. So it's going to be negative square root of 25 times negative 1. Negative square root of 25 times i squared. I'm going to do this part, this radical first. I'm going to get 5i, and then just get turned into negative 5i, because whatever I have up front, I'm just multiplying by the answer I get from my radical. Right? Square root of 25 is 5, square root of i squared is i. Does that make sense? Yes? No? Yeah. Some sort of head nod even all day. Okay. All right, I want you, we'll do four, and then I want you to try five and six. Deal? Okay, number four, five times the square root of negative 81. Same thing, leave that five alone for right now. Becomes square root of 81 times i squared. Hey, is it okay if I skip the 81 times negative one stuff? Is everyone okay with that? Yes. I can go right to here? Okay. So I get five times... Square root of 81 is 9. Square root of i squared is i. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it out. 5 times 9 is 45 i. That's my answer. All right? Try 5 and 6, please. 6 is a little trickier. Talk to someone next to you. Think if you can come up with something of how you might be able to solve it. How you might be able to do it. Because you cannot take square root of 20 and then round it. We're not rounding here. We want exact answers.
What's up, man? Oh, do you, do you get it? Is that what you're saying? No. I know? I think you put in the food. Not too in time. All right, hey, let's go through them. Number five should be easy, right? Negative six times square root of negative 36. If we change that, we get negative six times square root. 36 times I squared. Negative six times square root of 36 is six. Square root of I squared is I. I get negative 36 I. Did we all get that for five? Okay, number six. Does anyone remember when we did simplified radical form? What that meant? Okay, well let's let's think about it. If I go to here, I go two times square root of twenty times i squared. Right, we're all okay if I jump to that step, yeah. right? Because that's just taking the negative one out, making i squared. If we took the square root of twenty before, we did simplified radical form. What did we try and find that goes into twenty? What is 4 called? What do we call that? What are those up there? Perfect square, right? So we're looking for a perfect square that goes into 20. In this case, it's 4. So I can break this down into 4 and 5. So 2 times square root of 4 times square root of 5 times the square root of i squared. Remember when we did that? Yes. Yep, we're in it. It's going to come back. Great. So find the perfect square that goes into your number and break it down. 4 times 5 will give me 20. So I get 2 times square root of 4 is 2. Times square root of 5 is not a nice number. We're going to leave that. And then times i. Right? Now when you go to write your answer, there's going to be two ways you can write it. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 5, i. That is a perfectly acceptable answer, but that is not the way I would write it if I was you. I would write it as 4i square root of 5. Either of those would be marked correct on a test. Either one of those ways. Why would I not want to do it the first way, you think? It's not saying the i is on the 5, but that's why I wouldn't, because it might be confusing. Right, that I might sneak back under the radical, and we do not want that. If that I is under your radical, it's marked wrong. Right, that I, we took the square root of I squared to get just I. So it needs to be outside the radical. Like I said, I would move it out front. I prefer the way down here, because it's less chance of you getting confused and putting it back under the radical. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did that answer your question? Okay. Any questions so far on that? Okay, we're almost done. So, that was just talking about imaginary numbers, how we use them. Now let's talk about complex numbers. A complex number is any number that can be written in the standard form A plus BI. Every answer you have when you need to write a complex number will be written in that form. What that means is A is a real part. So A is your real number and BI is the imaginary part. So we have a real plus imaginary part. Your real will always come first in your final answer. If it doesn't, marked wrong. So A is your real part, BI is your imaginary <coughs> part. So if you look at some of these complex numbers written down here, 5, 7 plus 2i, my real part would be 7, my imaginary part would be 2i. Right? The piece with the i is your imaginary part. If I have 1 minus 5i, 1 is my real part, negative 5i is my imaginary part. If I have just 8i, that is the same as 0 plus 8i. So my real part would be 0, 
my imaginary part would be 8i. And lastly, negative 2 fifths would be my real, 3i over 5 would be my imaginary. Any questions on how we write complex numbers or which parts are which? Okay, let's try and separate some parts. If I have 4 plus 7i, Evan, what's my real part? 4. Good. Jay, what's my imaginary part? 7i. 7i. Perfect. If I have negative 2i, Cameron, what's my real part going to be for that, you think? It's not technically up here. It's like 0 minus 2i, right? So what would my real part be? 0. Good. And Isaiah? What would be the imaginary part for that then? Positive? Negative 2i. I guess if there's a minus there, it's a negative 2i. 9 minus 10i. Bailey, what's my real part? 9. 9, good. Carlina, what's my imaginary part? Negative 10i, perfect. One more, negative 10i plus 42. What's my real part going to be? 42, good. What's my imaginary part? Negative 10i. Hey, guys, what's wrong with how they wrote that? Backwards. It's backwards, right? If you write a final answer like that on the test, it's going to get marked wrong. So if you need to when you're doing problems like that, if you need to switch it to 42 minus 10i, go ahead and do that. It's perfectly fine. All right, we have four problems left and we're done. Four left and we're done. When we are adding and subtracting complex numbers, we are adding like terms. So you're adding the real parts to the real parts. You're subtracting the real parts from the real parts. You're adding the imaginary and the imaginary. You're subtracting imaginary from imaginary. Right? We're just doing like terms. First one, 3 plus 5i plus negative 2 plus 3i. First thing is I'm going to add my real parts. 3 plus negative 2. 1. Then I'm going to add my imaginary, 5i plus 3i, so plus 8i. Remember, your real comes first when you write your answer, so it's 1 plus 8i. Okay. Second one, 6 plus 4i minus 3 plus 6i. Subtract your real part, 6 minus 3 is 3. 4i minus 6i. Negative 2i. Okay? Real and real, imaginary and imaginary. Remember, this is only for adding and subtracting. We're going to talk about multiplying tomorrow. And we're going to have different rules. Okay. 4 minus 2i plus 5 plus 11i. Real plus real. 4 plus 5 is 9. Imaginary plus imaginary. Negative 2i plus 11i. We plus 9i. Lastly, 8 plus 13i minus 4 minus 9i. Real minus real. 8 minus 4 will be 4. 13i minus negative 9i will be 22i, right? Plus 22. And that's my final answer. Any questions on that, guys? That was a pretty easy day, right? All right, one more time.